Hey guys, it's Kate. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm so excited. We're finally back with another mascara comparison. I know it's been a little bit, a few weeks since my last one. So thank you guys all so much for being patient. But today I have a five drugstore mascaras that you guys recommended to me and that I got a lot of comments about. I'm so excited for this video, but I just want to do my little spiel if you guys are new here. Basically what I do in this video is I take five mascaras and I show you the application, the wand, do an overview of each one. Over the course of three days, I wear all the mascaras and wear them for eight hours to see how they last throughout the day. Then by the end of the video, I rank each mascara from one being best, five being worst. So it's basically just a very comprehensive review of five mascaras, right? So yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. I have a lot of my channel if you guys are interested. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. These videos do take a lot of time to film and edit, but I just, I love doing them. These are like my favorite ones. So yeah, I don't want to talk too much. I'm just going to jump into day one where I take two of the drugstore mascaras and compare them. Hey guys, welcome to day one of testing two highly rated drugstore mascaras. So today I chose these two mascaras to pair up against each other because I think I got the most like comments about these mascaras wanting me to try them. And also these are the ones I was honestly most excited for, so I wanted to put them in day one. So I'm just going to do an overview of each one before I show you guys the application. So the first one is the L'Oreal Bambi Eyes Mascara, which t I got tons of comments about, but I don't think I'd, I'd ever seen this or used this before. So I have it on Amazon right here. It has five stars. It comes with 0.28 fluid ounces, which is honestly a decent amount of mascara. Sometimes mascaras come with like 0.2 ounces, which is like kind of unacceptable, honestly. It retails for about $9, and I got mine in the shade Washable Blackest Black. Okay, so it's supposed to provide an instant eye-opening result with mascara that's supposed to volumize and curl each lash. Oh, and then this mascara does claim no smudging or flaking. So not many mascaras really claim anything about lasting throughout the day. And when they do, I get really excited because it actually makes me hopeful because if you guys watch my mascara reviews before, you know that I really struggle with mascaras flaking and smudging on me. I think it's because I have longer lashes and they kind of like press up against my eyebrows so I get smudging up there. I decided to pair this mascara up against the Maybelline Lash Stiletto Mascara because this one I also got tons of comments about and I think I've seen this in stores but I've never tried it. On Amazon it comes with 0.22 fluid ounces which is a little bit less product. I got mine in the blackest shade washable very black. Okay so first of all it does have like vitamin B5 in it so it's supposed to condition your lashes which is nice. Um, it has a grip and extend brush to grasp each lash and coat from every angle. You're you're supposed to have 70% longer lashes with luminous shine, which is, that's an interesting claim. It's also supposed to give you a dramatic long lash look, but it doesn't say anything about like lasting throughout the day. But I'm going to zoom in. We're going to start with the Bambi eyes on my left eye. We're going to take a look at the wand and then apply it. Okay, so here's the L'Oreal Bambi Eyes wand. As you can see, it's, I don't know, the, can you see the formula already kind of like getting like clumpy and stuff? I'm interested to see how it applies, but it does have like a spiky rounded wand. Okay, so we're gonna start on the lower lashes. Honestly, first impression so far, I mean, it applies right away. I really like that about mascaras. I hate having to like go in so many times. Oh God, it seems like it could get a little bit clumpy. Honestly, so far I like the wand. It seems like a pretty black mascara and we are getting like lots of volume there. Now the true test will be on the upper lashes. I feel like I can tell the most about a mascara when I apply it to my upper ones. It does seem like a pretty wet formula because it does like apply right away and I can kind of feel the wetness but it's not like a super thin formula. I'd say it's more so probably in the middle. I actually don't mind the wand. I feel like this is like a um, unique wand. I haven't tried a wand like this in forever. Normally I just try like spiky ones or like spooly ones. So I really don't mind it. It doesn't seem to be getting too clumpy on the upper lashes, which is good. I notice it's usually easier to clump on the lower lashes because they're kind of just going everywhere. But do you see how there's like tons of volume at the base right there? But remember, a big claim about this mascara is that it's supposed to like curl your lashes. And I do not curl my lashes before any of these um, mascara videos at all. Okay, so there's about probably like two and a half coats of this mascara. Okay, first impressions of it. I think this mascara has so much like potential. Like I really, really enjoy how black it is, how much volume there is like throughout the entire lash, like not just at the base. Also quickly, I do want to mention in the description, I do leave an update letting you guys know how the mascaras wash off the eyes at the end of the day. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the Maybelline Lash Stiletto on my right eye. We're going to take a look at the wand. Okay, here's the wand for the Maybelline Lash Stiletto. To be honest, I thought it was going to be kind of like the telescopic wand, but it kind of has that more like spoolie-ish wand look. So I'm very curious to see how this will look. So I am going to start on my lower lashes. Now I already prefer the size of this wand because it's not as big and it's just kind of like easier to get in there. Oh, I don't know how I feel. Oh, I'm already like getting it over myself. It seems like a pretty wet formula. I don't know how I'm feeling about this wand. I mean, I like the size of it, like I said, but 
Okay, I mean, it's easy to get each lash. I'm not like struggling with that. Okay, so there's a lash stiletto on my right eye. As you can see, like, there is a big difference. Like, these are, like, thin, black, long lashes. These are more, like, shorter, but lots of volume, so they definitely have different looks. Okay, now we're gonna start on the upper lashes, which I'm way more interested in. Okay, I, like, got more of myself. I'm definitely not really a fan of the wand. Yeah, I don't know. It's, like, not really going on immediately. Like, I did a couple coats there, but, like, nothing's really happening. Like, I don't really know what I think about it. The wand, I don't, I've mentioned before, I'm not the biggest fan of like spoolie-ish looking wands. I like like the spikier ones or at least more like plastic ones. So I feel like these ones don't really like do anything for your lashes. And this one does claim like 70% more length. And I don't really know if I'm like seeing that, but I'm definitely not expecting volume with this mascara, but it's definitely like a very thin and wet formula. So I am going to go in with a second coat to see if we can build up some of that like length that I claimed. But I don't know, um, the L'Oreal Telescopic definitely lengthens my lashes a lot more and the Sky High does too. Okay, so here's the mascara side by side, finished two coats on each of them. Normally most mascaras curl my lashes a little bit more and give them a little bit more lift, but I'm not really seeing that with either of these. I do really want to see if these mascaras remove off the skin because I do get it all over myself. I'm going to use a spoolie. We're going to see on the L'Oreal Bambi Eye. Oh great, so L'Oreal Bambi Eye comes off the skin super easily. Now we're gonna test out Maybelline Lash Stiletto. Okay, it looks like Lash Stiletto also comes off the eye super easily, which is great because I got that stuff everywhere. So here's the final look at both the mascaras. I am be wearing them both for eight hours to see like if they smudge, flake, things like that. But currently it is about 1 p.m. So I'm gonna be back in eight hours from now at 9 p.m. and see how they look. Hey guys, I'm back. It's been eight hours, so it's about 9 p.m. and I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna look at the mascaras. Okay, so here are the mascaras up close. As you can see, um, they definitely both smudged a lot. Now, on the L'Oreal Bambi Eye side, I definitely say it's smudged the most, and honestly, it's the most upsetting because this mascara actually claimed no smudging and no flaking, and clearly, it does smudge, and it smudges a lot. Like, it was cold in my room today. It wasn't, like, hum humid out or anything, so I don't really know or understand why this happened. I know this is this probably, like, the six and five hour mark. The one nice thing, though, is that neither of these mascaras really flaked. Under the eyes here, I don't really see any flaking maybe like tiny little ones but honestly on both sides it looks really good so now on the Maybelline Lash Stiletto side still smudging but not as much and still not as much flaking but then again the Maybelline Lash Stiletto didn't claim no smudging so it's like I didn't really expect it to last that long because it didn't claim that another thing about both these mascaras is I definitely say they dropped a lot honestly the Bambi Eyes one dropped the most like I feel like my lashes look so like straight at this point and not that these mascaras curl my lashes that much but they definitely did like drop throughout the day and don't look as good. I'm gonna zoom out and if you guys haven't watched these videos before, I do um, pick a winner each day and so I'm gonna zoom out and do that. Okay, I'm honestly kind of disappointed. These are the two mascaras that I was most excited about and they just didn't really wear well through for me. Now, between these two mascaras, honestly, picking a winner is really, really difficult. They basically tie in my opinion because I did like the Bambi Eyes on the eyes way better than the L'Oreal, I mean, Maybelline Stiletto because this one is too natural for me. But the wear task for the Bambi Eyes is really, really bad, but I'm still gonna say that the Bambi Eyes one wins just because I like the look of it. Yes, the smudging was really, really bad, but maybe it was just a bad day. I'll try it again in like a few weeks or so, and I'll update you guys in the description if I change my mind about it. But tomorrow we have two mascaras that I'm also pretty excited about, and I think they'll perform well. So yeah, just stay tuned in a couple seconds. I'm gonna go day two, and we're gonna test two more. Hey guys, welcome to day two of testing mascaras that you guys recommended. So, okay, so the first mascara that was requested by you guys is the Maybelline New York Illegal Lengths Fiber Mascara. So I have seen this, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit of an older mascara, but a lot of people also recommended this and commented about this mascara. And then the indie mascara I was talking about is the Golden Rose Nude Look Full Volume Definitive Mascara. So this I found on Amazon and wait, I'm curious to see how many reviews this has. Well, there's only two reviews, but it's only like $4. I mean, I'll get into the or review in a second, but I have no idea what to expect with this, but I'm honestly really, really excited. So I'm first just going to go over the overview of the Maybelline Illegal Length. So this one's on Amazon. This one comparatively has 1,000 300 reviews. Um, I got mine in the shade Blackest Black Washable. It comes with 0.22 fluid ounces, which is a little bit lower, I'd say, than average. It retails for $8, which isn't bad at all. And then I'm going to scroll down, look for the overview. Okay, wait, I see here 
that it says no flakes. So I don't say anything about no smudging, but it does say no flaking. It says it's Maybelline's first mascara with four millimeters of measurable fiber extensions that deliver longer lashes. So I guess the fibers in here are supposed to like connect to your lashes sort of, but it's not like a fiber mascara. Um, and then I wanted to compare it against the Golden Rose New Look Full Volume Mascara. And so this one, like I said, retails for about $4 on Amazon, super cheap. It only comes in one shade that I see. I don't see it in black. Okay, it's just black. Okay, so this mascara doesn't have too many claims. It says it's a full volume definitive mascara that has buildable texture to add full volume and length with just a few coats. Um, it has a perfect fiber brush. It's supposed to volumize your lashes all day long. It says it has an all day formula. So this does claim like long lasting, but it doesn't say anything specifically about smudging or flaking, just that it's supposed to last long. But this one, there honestly, there's like nothing really about it. And there's only two reviews. So I guess just volume and length and lasting throughout the day. Um, I am gonna zoom in and we're gonna take a look at both these mascaras wands and apply and start by probably applying the legal lengths to my left eye. Okay, so here's the wand of the Maybelline Legal Lengths, and doesn't it look identical to the um, Lash Stiletto mascara from yesterday? Both these mascaras kind of come in the same tube. Wait, see how they come in like the same tube? Like they kind of seem like they're supposed to be similar. Okay, yeah, I feel like I'm applying like the literal exact same mascara as I did <laughs> the other day. Okay, it's definitely applying a lot of length. I mean, it is called Illegal Length, so I'm hoping it would be a lengthening mascara. So I do have to be careful not to look down because it is a pretty wet formula. I do like the application on the lower lashes. It does feel a little bit messy to me, but I will tell the most by the upper lash application. Okay, it, it feels identical to the one yesterday. I'm so confused. But remember, the ones yesterday didn't really curl my lashes or lengthen them, and this one, oh god, I'm, yeah, so it's very wet. I'm getting it everywhere, but I'm hoping that maybe this one will be more lengthening than the ones yesterday and maybe a little bit more volumizing and curling too. Okay, so there's one light first coat of this mascara. It looks pretty identical to the ones yesterday, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna go into the second one. I kind of want more length. I'm hoping this gives me something, but I mean, if this one doesn't smudge and actually lasts throughout the day, that'll be nice. It is a little bit warmer out today, so, and it's pretty humid, so I'm kind of worried about that, but I'm not like going outside or anything. It's not like I'm going to run around. I'll just be in my air conditioned room. I definitely prefer the second coat. This definitely does look better than the um, Lash Stiletto from yesterday. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the Golden Rose Mascara Wand, which I have no idea what this one looks. Oh, so these are kind of the exception. These wands, the exception to my rule of liking like hard plasticky wands, like the um, L'Oreal um, Lash Paradise wands, kind of similar to this. Like I don't mind these ones as much. I feel like they do more for your lashes. And this mascara seems like super black. So I don't know, I'm excited about this. I have a feeling I'm gonna get it all over myself though. Okay, we're gonna start on my lower lashes. Okay, this formula actually reminds me Oh god, so I was right. I am kind of, sorry, getting it everywhere. This formula does remind me of the KKW Mascara formula. So this one's much more thicker and drier. I mean, it's still like obviously wet because I'm like getting it everywhere, but it's a lot thicker of a formula than the Elite. Oh god. I don't know. It's like sticky. I don't really know how to describe it, but... Okay, so there's application on the lower lashes. As you can see, I, I feel like the Golden Rose one's gonna have more like volume, whereas this one, you can definitely tell it separates your lashes more and there's a lot more length. But I am gonna start on the upper lashes. Yeah, so it is like a very thick formula. Like you have to go with a couple coats to start seeing it kind of apply. I don't mind the wand at all. It definitely does remind me a little bit of the L'Oreal Lash Paradise wand, but we're gonna do one coat first. The formula is very different. I don't know how to describe it. I keep saying like sticky, but I feel like that's an awful way of describing this. I just feel like I've been trying pretty thin formulas recently and this one's definitely, it feels so much thicker compared to the other ones. Like I'm not used to it. Okay, so there's one coat of this mascara. I'm seeing a little bit more curl than the other ones we've tried so far. I definitely say it's also, I think, blacker. I'm not mad about it. We're gonna go yeah. in with a second coat. I kind of want a little bit more like volume, I guess. And I do feel like this mascara, because the formula is so thick and the wand isn't spiky, as you can see, it probably can get clumpy. Okay, so here's the mascara side by side, two coats on each eye. So as you can see, the Golden Rose mascara doesn't separate my lashes as much, and it gives a more like clumpier look, but it makes me kind of look like I have fuller lashes, I say, on this side. Whereas this one kind of separates the lashes and they kind of stick together, but, but it's definitely like a cleaner look, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm just having a weird lash day or whatever too, but it does, this is probably one of the more clumpier mascaras I've tried. I do want to see if the mascara comes off the skin with a spoolie, so we're going to start on the illegal length side. Okay, good news. Oh wow, that comes off so easily. That's that's great. 
Okay, this one comes off a little bit more. You gotta go in a few more times, but looks like it comes off. This one I might have to put uh, some concealer over that, but. Okay, so here's a final look at both the mascaras. I feel like today we have two mascaras that are very, very different and kind of provide different things, but I will be wearing them for eight hours. Both mascaras claim like long lasting. So it's 3 p.m. So I'll be back, oh my God, at 11. Yeah, okay, 11 p.m. And we're gonna see how these look at the end of the day. Hey guys, I'm back. So it's been eight hours. It's 11.15 and we're going to zoom in and look at the mascaras. Okay, so here are the mascaras up close and as you can see, they both definitely wore better. So they for sure beat the mascaras from yesterday. Those ones were just like smudging everywhere and it was cold the other day. It was warm today and like these didn't smudge. I mean, maybe a tiny bit right up there, but like barely. So I'm really, really happy with how these last throughout the day. Both claimed long wearing. So, and I feel like they pretty much held up to that. I mean, the one thing with these is that there are some flaking. So let's see we're first gonna look with look at the um illegal Langs mascara from maybelline on this eye i definitely say the mascara maybe dropped a little bit but it's like not too bad like i said maybe slight smudging and then there are like a few flakes under there and like in there but it's still like really not that bad it overall wore like pretty well throughout the day like i'm pretty happy with that and then when we go over and look at the golden rose side there's a little bit maybe a little bit more flaking i'd say under here like bigger flakes maybe tiny bit transferring right up there but like still like nothing insane this mascara definitely dropped more and did not like hold the curl and it still it does look pretty much similar as when I applied it and it is a little bit like clumpy as I said now between these two mascaras obviously they beat the ones from yesterday but if I have to kind of pick a winner for today I'm gonna have to say that the Maybelline Illegal Lengths definitely won tomorrow day three we have one last mascara we're gonna be trying and we'll see if that one beats this one ow oh my god or if this one like wins throughout so yeah um stay tuned in a couple seconds we're gonna be moving on to day three Hey guys, I'm back for the final wear test, day three. So I have one mascara to be testing today. This is the Essence, the False Lashes Mascara, but this is the Extreme Volume and Curl one. So I've tried the other version of this. It's kind of like, it has like salmon down here. And that one was okay. I don't think it was, it definitely like wasn't my favorite or anything. So I'm curious to see how this one kind of differs from that one. Um, okay, so we're gonna go right into the overview. I have this one on my phone. First of all, this one is vegan and paraben free, which is great. It has actually really, really good reviews. It retails for $5. So it's the cheapest mascara in the entire video i can't figure out how much product it comes with i'm not sure but it's probably just like a normal amount okay so here are the claims it says there's dramatic volume and curl the brush is supposed to coat every lash um it's also supposed to last all day free from flaking and fading and it's also cruelty free so i guess we're looking for volume and curl with this maybe some length but and lasting a long time so this is exciting i really hope it does actually last long throughout the day i feel like this video in particular with all these mascaras none of them are doing like an amazing job of lasting throughout the day. I mean, the ones from yesterday weren't awful. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to take a look at the wand and then apply this to my eyes. Okay, so here's the wand. It's the first curved wand I feel like that I've tried in a long time. I'm really hoping this actually does hold the curl because also all the mascaras in this video today, guys, have all been awful with curling. Like, they do not hold it. They do not curl lashes. They all, like, dropped by the end of the day, so I'm hoping this one does a little bit better. We're going to start on my lower lashes, and I think I'm going to use, like, the curved end. So it's kind of easy to like get right in there. The formula doesn't seem super like thin or wet. It kind of seems like a drier formula, but I'll have to see on the upper lashes. I mean, it's pretty easy to apply. I mean, I'm not really getting it everywhere. It's applying so easily. Like as you can see, like I'd say it's not really getting like clumpy or anything. That was like such an easy application to the lower lashes. I like how it looks. Now we're going to apply this to my upper lashes, which is the most important. I'm very curious to see how curling this mascara really is, but the formula is definitely different than a lot of the formulas I've tried in this video. It's definitely more like a drier and thicker formula, but it seems to apply right away. Like that was only a couple layers and you can already see that. Sorry, my phone. But I'm going to keep going in. We're going to do one heavy-ish coat first. I mean, it's not like getting clumpy or anything, which is really nice, especially because the formula is a little bit drier. So there is one coat of the mascara. I definitely say this is probably the most curling mascara that I've tried in this video so far. I mean, it's not crazy or anything, but the other ones were definitely a little bit droopy. So I like this one better. Definitely not a lot of length again, but I'm going to go in again and see if we can add a little bit more volume. Maybe it got a little bit clumpy there, but it's looking like wispy. I actually, 
I'm actually really liking this and I know I'm getting it all over myself. Okay, so there's two coats of this mascara. It definitely added a lot more length. I'm actually really happy with that. It's pretty black and I mean, there aren't really any clumps. I mean, there are like some, you know, lashes that are like kind of like stuck together, but honestly, out of all the mascaras I've tried so far, this is the one that I feel like I like the most on my eyes, I'd say. Just because it's a little bit more curled and doesn't look as like messy. It's pretty black, but um, I'm gonna go off camera and apply it to my right eye and I'll be back to kind of show you it in both eyes. Then we'll do the eight hour wear test. Okay, so I'm back. Here's the mascara on both my eyes. I feel like on this side, my lashes look a lot more separated. I did sneeze in the, <laughs> in the middle of applying my mascara, so that's why I have it all over myself. This will be a good test. I have my spoolie, and we're gonna see... Oh god, I'm hoping it comes off, because I got it. Okay, I mean, it comes off. It leaves a little bit of a black, but, you know, what can you do? I can't be, like, too mad about that. It is my fault for getting it everywhere. I will be wearing this mascara for eight hours like the other, so currently it is 12. I'll be back at eight, and then we'll do like a final ranking, one being best, five being worst of all the mascaras I've tried so far. Hey guys, I'm back. So it is about eight o'clock and we're gonna zoom in and look at the mascara. Okay, so here's the mascara close up. Remember, this mascara is on both of my eyes and as you can see, it did smudge. I don't know what's with the smudging in this video. I feel like I've never had so many mascaras smudge in a mascara comparison before, but it did smudge on my upper brow bone. Even this one smudged on my lower lashes, which hasn't, I don't think, happened in this video yet. There's also like some like flakes under there and the mascara did drop a little bit. I mean, it was probably the most like curled mascara I tried in this video, I'd say, but it, you know, you know, it, it, most mascaras drop by the end of the day anyway, so I'm not too mad about that, but this mascara did claim long-lasting, and it clearly is not, so that's kind of disappointing, but I am going to zoom out because, oh my god, my hair is everywhere. I, I'm going to rank sort of each mascara, one being best, five being worst in this video. Before I rank these, I do want to say that in all my mascara videos, I try to be as honest as possible. Don't get me wrong, some mascaras, like, will work for other people, and so many people, like, love the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. That's a staple in so many people's collections, but for me, it just doesn't really work for me and like you know that happens with everyone and with everyone's mascaras sometimes I recommend mascaras to you guys and you guys don't end up liking them and I always I hate when that happens I always feel bad but you know everyone's preferences are different everyone's lashes are different and it's you guys are probably like yeah, we know like <laughs> but I feel bad still because like you guys recommend these mascaras to me and when I don't like absolutely love them sometimes I feel bad well, I was thinking about ranking these and I was I just like I don't know how to do it because none of them really stand out to me honestly out of all of them the ones that I liked best on my eyes were the L'Oreal Bambi mascara. I love the way this looked. It had lots of volume from base to tip, which is kind of unlike, it's harder to find mascaras like that. Most mascaras, there's more like volume at the base, but it doesn't really fall the way up. So I did like the application of this. It wasn't as curling as it claimed though, and then it also wasn't long lasting the smudging. This probably had the worst wear test, I'd say. And then the mascara I tried today that's on my eyes, like I like the way this one looked, but once again, Essence mascaras on me like never really last well. The Lash Princess ones, even though like those are fan favorites, those personally just like don't wear well on me and also smudge so this one also I'm just kind of doing an overview honestly I don't really know how to rank these there was one that was like better than the rest and that was probably the Maybelline Illegal length so if I had to say that one wins it's this one but at the same time like this one doesn't stand out to me I'm not going to use it again like it's still like good it just it's not like my personal preference I prefer more volume this like had more length and I'm also not really a fan of the wand the wand was like the exact same as the like Maybelline stiletto and this one the stiletto one just like smudged more so that's why that just is kind of irrelevant to me and then the golden rose new mascara i kind of have a feeling because i ordered it from amazon like i don't know i feel like i ordered like a bad one or something because the formula seemed weird when i opened it so i'm not really sure about this one because it was similar to the kkw mascara formula and then both of those like felt weird to me it kind of felt like stale in a way so i don't know if i just got a weird one or whatever but this one just had lots of volume but it definitely was pretty clumpy so i'm not really gonna rank them but the legal lengths won one so this was number one i guess and the rest kind of just kind of all fall in the same category for me personally. Thank you guys all so much for watching as always. I'll try to have a new mascara comparison video up in like a week or two probably. I think I might do a top five waterproof mascara to kind of switch it up so that'll be interesting and we'll see how they wash off the eyes. I might like lose all my lashes doing that video but I don't know. I, I Having one really good waterproof mascara I feel like is important in some occasions but oh my god I've been talking so much. Thank you guys all so much for watching as always. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and make lots of mascara videos and I'll see you on Tuesday. Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with a new video.